Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with our next topic for this training which is on shadow instance creation. So basically why, what is a shadow instance and why do we need a shadow instance? Let's see in our subsequent slides. Okay, here you can see that we are doing an upgrade and during an upgrade process what happens is that to minimize the downtime the shadow instance is created. So basically what is a shadow instance? What happens exactly in the shadow instance creation? You can see that this is your SAP R3 is there. This is your 4.60 system as an example. And this is installation by prepare. Basically you have this user SAP SID is your SAP system. Then you can create a folder where you can put your upgrade related software over here. So user SAP R3 is used to connect to the productive system. So this is basically for connecting to the productive system. For the shadow instance what happens is that the user SAP R3 SHD is used to connect to the database schema of the shadow instance. Okay, So in this case as an example we are using a 7.0 system. So the schema for that is SAP. Uh, this is your schema and this is the user which is used to connect to the shadow instance. The productive system central instance is using the executables and profiles from user SAP SID directory. Okay, so here you can see it's basically productive system is using the files from this folder and for the upgrade for the shadow instance we have created a this folder where we put all the stuff related with shadow instance. Okay, now what happens in the shadow instance creation? Basically there are some input parameters and based on that the the instance number of shadow instance basically the etc services file is populated so these are the three services which are populated basically sap ms ssd sid that is for the message server for the dispatcher for the gateway so these are the three different services which are populated okay then no old entry for these ports basically 37 and 37 and 39 30 40 13 okay so that is about the port stuff now let's get into the profile stuff. So basically what happens is that here you can see that this is the profile, default profile, instance profile and the start profile and this is the work folder. Okay for shadow instance what happens is that you have your home ssd slash sid under that you have start sap and stop sap. So same thing gets created for shadow also. Here you can see that dev port slash underscore this is a sit basically this is a folder where you have your shadow kernel and shadow instance related files okay what happens in the shadow instance related phases so in this you, you can see there is a phase called shd inst underscore cpy basically it copies and profiles and start sap stop sap scripts to shadow instance directories then you have a phase called shd inst underscore adapt underscore then you have underscore mod. So what happens in these phases is basically the adaptation for the path to shadow instance profile and executable is done. Connect parameters are set and profile settings are adapted. Then you have a phase called SSD INST underscore DB underscore prep. Basically in this phase what happens is that you create the shadow instance DB user schema etc. So for Oracle DB user could be SAP R3 SSD, for MCOD it could be SAP SID SSD and for Unix it could be you can use a script called CR SSD USR.SQL manually as user or a SID. And there are some checks which is involved here basically ports are registered in the services, in the profiles, ports which are not listed, naming convention etc. So this is basically the part of shadow instance creation activities. Okay, now let's see the system switch upgrade process. Basically you can see on the left side you have your 4.6c productive system. On the right side you have your 7.0 shadow system. So as a step one basically the import you are importing it to exchange tables, central basis tables, Okay, then basis tables and all the new tables, they are imported into the shadow schema. Okay, after that, so basically these are the new stuff. 
now in the step 2 what happens is that copy to shadow takes place so from basis table from central basis table so that copy operation happens okay so that is about this phase okay now here you can see that the in the shadow instance you can see that aliases is created synonym is created view is created so for the existing tables the synonym aliases and view are created so this is your shadow schema okay in the production schema what happens is that you have your these shadow tables so for each table you have one uh, table by this name which is either it could be a alias could be synonym could be a view is created so these aliases guide to the physical table in the shadow of our production schema okay so that is about the table creation part okay now upgrade faces that is eu underscore import so create basis and exchange shadow tables in this basically what happens is exchange table always have shadow schema name table and this tilde sign so this tells that this is a table created for the shadow then you can see that the ba basis shadow tables may have original name if they are new and table this if they are old so import complete repository for application system into exchange tables the, this import happens to the r3 load and import basis entries into basis tables this import also happens to the r3 load okay if we go to the previous slide here you can see that how this things are uh, present say you here you have your 4.6 c tables of the productive system here you can see these are the new tables which has come now for the existing tables here you can see that either alias synonym or view is created with this naming convention so using this naming convention seeing this naming convention you can find out this is a uh, shadow this is basically referring shadow instance tables okay now here you can see the actual upgrade basically what is happening is there you are populating these exchange tables basis tables views etc okay so you in this particular phase sql scr exe underscore alias what happens is that using a tp step shadow connect process the alias the synonym the views are created for shadow user on shadow table of original user say for example this is basically i am giving an example of what actually is happening here in this particular screen what is happening here is that you are connecting as the shadow instance user shadow schema user which is sap r3 shd and you create synonym so you are creating this synonym for this one okay so this is referring to shadow connect as sap r3 grant all on this table which is having a tilde sign to sap r3 ssd so this is how we conduct or we create the tables for the existing tables of old version okay now here you can see view imp underscore bas basically it's for the r3 load step and shadow connect you create views and alias and basically you are connecting as this user and you create a view as select from this table so this is how you are creating your synonym this is how you are creating your views over here okay now in this screen you are seeing the system switch upgrade process basically what is taking place during the upgrade process so now you are able to connect to an instance with the new kernel so the new kernel is in place this kernel connects to the shadow schema and accesses the shadow repository via the aliases in its system so these tables they are connected to the shadow schema or shadow tables or these tables and get the data from these aliases and views so you know, cannot go further in detail here the location of these tables depend on the particular database okay so based on the naming convention the database names will be there okay now operations of shadow instance so at the top you can see your production system at the bottom you can see your shadow instance so basically this phase that is start underscore s h d i underscore start first basically it starts shadow instance for the first time 
then you have bad jobs on shadow instance basically for versioning preparations you have spdd basically for modification adjustment on shadow instance then you have activation phase which is act underscore upgrade or act underscore release basically it's a parallel activation on shadow instance then you have your phase called distribution phase which is par dist underscore sht that is parallel distribution on shadow instance and then finally you have stop shadow instance finally which is stop underscore shdi underscore last okay so that is about the shadow instance and sap GUI. so for spdd basically batch monitoring troubleshooting during shadow instance we need to log into the shadow instance and whatever instance number we have created while creating a shadow instance using that you can log into the shadow instance basically you can create an entry in your sap GUI and log in to sap using this particular entry okay features of shadow instance so what we have seen is a ddk user password is copied from the productive instance and create additional users with transaction issues either one so just to make sure that for whatever reason if the user is locked you have an additional user you can work with no application no access to application table only basis table is accessible no customizing no production operation so basically no access to application tables no tp import to shadow instances no tp mnv tabs no ddl statements and no online activation and conversion so only inactive is available in se 11 and no operations in se 14 but access to target release repository during production operation on source system so just a caution that is just make sure that in case if you are using any of these binaries these tools r3 load r3 trans tp make sure that you have the right environment you are using the right environment variables for them because if you mix the environment with variables between an existing production system and a shadow system it will create a chaos it may damage the system as well so just take a note all right then thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye